So what if a nuclear strike would happen? Do you have the supplies you need to survive for at least 48 hours? Well, stay tuned and we're going to go through those supplies one at a time. Hey, resilient citizens, it's Prepper Potpourri here and I have another prepping video for you. Please click on the subscribe button if you haven't already and on that bell alert so you are alerted every time I produce a new video. Now, let's get on with the show. So again, I'm going to stress, I think that the possibility of suffering from a nuclear radiation fallout is still low. So please, please don't overstress from that. But it's always a good idea to be prepared for the unexpected. And a lot of the supplies I'm going to go through are ones that you should already have in your go bag and your emergency supplies anyway. So it's just a good inventory check. It's a good idea to have these supplies in your shelter and in your auto because you never know when something can happen, right? Now I have links below for a lot of these supplies if you are interested. You know, you can't always depend on your cell phone in an emergency. It just might not work because everybody else is trying it. The tower is down, something else. So it is always a really, really good idea to have a radio. And it can be the crank kind, although don't depend on that because that crank can uh, break. You know, have battery kind, solar powered, whatever, but have a radio. It's good to have it so it has the NOAA weather alerts. And I even like ones that have shortwave capability. Now the reason that you want the radio is you want to keep informed what's happening outside. When is it safe to leave? What route should you take when you leave? All those things are very important and hopefully you can hear it on your radio or at least in the shortwave capacity on your radio. Now this is the radio I like. It is a Kato radio and it has both the weather alerts and the shortwave capability. It is just really a great radio. Now this is the Red Cross. They also have a radio that they endorse, but it does not include shortwave. And in my bug out roll that I keep in the car, I have a smaller Cato radio. It's a great size to fit in the glove compartment too. Now it's a great idea to have a flashlight in your go bag, your car, your shelter. I'm not going to recommend a particular flashlight. There's a lot of them out there, a lot of good ones. But I do recommend that it is a flashlight that takes batteries. Because, you know, chances are you need your flashlight and oops, you forgot to charge it. So have flashlights in this case that take batteries. Now, that being said, make sure you have extra batteries for your radio and your flashlight. I found this little battery case on Amazon. It can hold either AA or AAA and you get a four pack. I thought it was a nice way to keep your batteries. So what's this heavy bag? Well, it's a good idea to have a complete change of clothes for every family member because they might need to have to get out of those clothes because they're contaminated. So you want to have clean clothes. And I keep these in my car. It is a wet bag and it has my hiking clothes and even hiking boots in it. So have a change of clothes for each member of your family. Now it's a good idea to have sealable plastic bags, something you can put those contaminated clothes in, seal it up, and get them out of your shelter area. Also, you might want some wet ones or these are Continental wipes that can also, so of course, be used for toilet purposes. But these are great for wiping down your pet in case they have fallout on them and wiping down yourself. So, keep some wet ones. After using any of these sheets, they should also be kept in a sealed plastic bag. Sleeping supplies are also a good idea, at least a nice heavy blanket. Uh, if you don't have much room, you can have like one of these bivvies. This is an SOL bivvy and these bivvies come in a 
different sizes, but they're a great idea if you don't have much room. And if you do have a lot of room, you might even want to have a sleeping bag for each member of your family. Now, it's a good idea to have food for at least 48 hours. And I think the easiest thing to store are bars like this. This is a Millennium Bar. I think this is raspberry. They come in a variety of flavors. Uh, they last five year shelf life and each bar has over 400 calories and they just don't take up much space. So this is what I store. Although in my prep room downstairs, I have all my canned and my freeze dried items. So I have a lot of other food, but these are darn convenient. I have frequently went one or two days without any food at all. And you know what? I do fine, but I have never went without water. So this is really, really an important prep. It's in its own container here, so it would be safe if there was radioactive fallout. So make sure you have enough water. You know, they always say have one gallon per person, although in this case, because that one gallon takes on cleaning and cooking, you might not need as much. This might go further. And if there was such an emergency, I would try to make this go as far as I can. Now, if you're eating food and you're drinking water, you're going to need a toilet. So maybe you have a bucket that you could put a trash bag in and that will work. Or you put that trash bag in, someone uses it, you put in some kitty litter. So kitty litter is a great idea to store also. And then have some TP, some toilet paper or some of these wipes handy. Really a great idea to have on hand. Well, we all, I think, have plenty of these, right? Dust masks, N95 masks, but these are a good idea to have in your supply and you might want to wear them if you're going out of your fallout shelter. And a good first aid kit. Now, this is the one I keep in my auto and I have a video on it. If you click on that little eye in the corner, you can go to it but always have a good auto and home first aid kit. But if you prefer to purchase a first aid kit, I think this Everlet kit is great because it combines both emergency supplies, such as a ferro rod and knife, along with first aid supplies. And it's in a nice Molly compatible bag. Have a whistle for each member. I like this SOL howler whistle. <laughs> Believe me, it is really piercingly loud. Include a good roll of duct tape. I have a lot of it down in my prep room and I have some in my car. You never know when it's going to come in handy, but it also could come in handy sealing around doors and windows in your prep shelter. Um, you know, before they had say use plastic sheeting and duct tape. Well, that might work for a chemical problem, but not uh, the plastic sheeting won't do anything for radioactive fallout, but the duct tape might help along the seams in the door and window. It also could help make when you're leaving your shelter more secure by taping up your slacks to your boots and your sleeves to your gloves, whatever you're wearing. I have a lot of maps too. I have these in my car and in my bug out roll. These are great emergency prep to have because if something like this happened, will your GPS or your cell phone navigator work? You might need some maps to get to your evacuation route. So have some maps in your preps. It's a good idea to have paper, pen, Sharpie in your prep area. Uh, you might have to write a note to loved ones saying where you went or maybe just to play tic-tac-toe or hangman. And talking about entertainment, it's a good idea to have something. You might want just a deck of cards or maybe a favorite book. Or in my case, maybe I'll finally read all the SAS survival guide. If you have young children, you might want age specific toys and board games in your prep area. Now this isn't necessary, but it makes you feel more human. Be able to brush your teeth, and deodorant might come in handy if you're in a closed space for any period of time without air conditioning. 
Now, each of you might have different situations. If you have infants, you want to make sure you had, you know, formula, bottles, diapers. If you are on insulin or special medication, you want to make sure you have that available. And females of a certain age need sanitary napkins or tampon supplies. So make sure that is available. Now the following supplies are completely optional. I don't have most of them myself. You know, if you feel the need to have a gas mask, make sure you really check out the company, make sure you know it's fitted well, how to use it, how to replace the canisters, all of that. And maybe you'd like a Geiger counter. Again, I don't have one, but check all references and make sure you buy one that really supports what you are looking for. Now as for hazmat suits, well, I have these suits and yep. wonderful cover, right? Now, they are Tyvek DuPont suits that I was able to get for a song at a White Elephant sale some years ago. But you know, they'd be a great thing to keep instead of a change of clothes, you could have that and change into because uh, it's all one piece overall. And I have this Amazon link if you're interested in getting a Tyvek suit. Now I have to say that the fabrics used in single-use protective garments do not provide a barrier to electromagnetic ionizing radiation such as gamma rays or x-rays. However, protective garments like Tyvek and Tycom apparel may provide limited shielding protection against radioactive alpha or beta particles. The one thing I do have is one of those radio triage 50 decimeter cards. I think I got it in a battle box some time ago and it's probably expired. I never even opened it up. I just stuck it and put it in the glove compartment of my car. The neat thing about these cards are the sensors change color when medically significant radiation doses are registered, but they only have a two year lifespan unless you place them in the freezer. Then you can extend the lifespan up to 10 years. And as for Ki potassium iodide pills, well, if you have young children or you're under age of 40, you may want to keep those in your car and in your prep shelter. But otherwise, I don't really advise it. And you can watch that video again in the eye in the corner if you wanna find out why I feel the way I do. So I came up with a list and I would be glad to send it to you. It's not that comprehensive. It's kind of what we went over. Uh, it's just an Excel format and it has a column for auto and a column for your shelter. But if you just send me an email to prepper potpourri, that's P-R-E-P-P-E-R-P-O-T-P-O-U-R-R-I at gmail.com and put list in the subject. I'd be glad to send it to you. Now, making this video, I went over my auto preps and my prep shelter room and kind of to see what I didn't have. So when I looked over my auto supplies, I need to refill bottled water. Again, I had taken it out of my car in winter because I didn't want it exploding all over. You know, when it froze, it expands. So I will be putting bottled water back in my car. I'm also, including trash bags, some um, sanitary napkins, uh, wet ones, that type of thing in my car kit and a deck of cards. But that's it. Otherwise, I really had everything. Well, here's my bug out roll spread out while I was looking through it. And really, I have a lot of supplies in it. They're very organized. Everything is labeled. But that's not the only thing I keep in my car. And I love how the Canadian bug out roll just rolls up so nice and contains so much stuff. So I actually keep things in my vehicle in this huge USA hockey bag, which somebody at work won and didn't want. So I says, yeah, I thought I'd take it to my grandson. They didn't need another one. But I realized, God, that's great. It keeps way too much stuff in it. Takes up a lot of room in the back of my Jeep. But 
I don't know. I just feel better prepared. Downstairs in my prep room slash fallout shelter, I could use more baby wipes. I do have some. And, you know, I have kitty litter upstairs, but I never had it down there. So I'm just going to put one box of it down there. Great idea in case we'd ever have to have a... Uh, toilet maid shift and I have a lot of the first aid supplies but I don't have them in necessarily a kit format down there I would probably if I had the chance grab the kit from my car or upstairs and I don't know I think somewhere I have a whistle but I'm not quite sure where it is so I might want to get a whistle handy and maybe just uh, some basic hygiene supplies because right now they're all up in the bathroom closet but that's it I had most of the supplies, and I bet you do too. So am I missing anything? Comment below and let me know if you have the supplies you need. As always, thank you so much for watching, and please subscribe and share the knowledge.